Hello, everyone. This is Yami Eccles Irwin with filmfestivalcircuit.com and the assistant director of the Texas Short Film Festival. Right now, we're gearing up for our fall 2023 screening, which is going to take place on October 14th at the Slab Cinema Art House in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, and today, we're talking with one of our participating filmmakers. Trey Murphy is the director of Leave Only Footprints. Hey, Trey, thank you so much for meeting with me today. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, so Leave Only Footprints, uh, it's kind of an interesting one. It's not just horror. There's kind of something going on there. Uh, it makes you think. I'm just curious, what inspired you to make this film? I well, A few things. I love exploring abandoned areas and, you know, photographing them. They're gorgeous. And nothing aggravates an urban explorer more than going in and seeing somebody's tagged um, a place that's sort of going back to the earth with their own, you know, spray paint marking. Right. And uh, I just thought, well, it'd be cool to kind of show that point of view in a short film. How could I do that and make it interesting? It's like, well, make essentially me the bad guy. And uh, yeah, that, I thought it would be fun. And, and it was. And then also my, you know, I just had a son shortly before making the film. And I thought, well, what a cool way of showing him later on in life, hey, just because you're married and you have kids and you know, you've know you got a full-time job, that doesn't mean you should stop pursuing dreams. So here's a murder film I made. <laughs> I love that. Well, I, I like that it goes in, in uh, lots of different directions. You know, it starts almost like a found footage. It becomes kind of this, uh, you know, uh, getting under the skin, uh, you know, creepy, creepy flick. And then it ends on just like saw, gore, you know, uh, uh warehouse you know cut to black but um yeah. and yeah well it's cool that the, the bad guy he's coming from an understandable perspective uh you know and this well, well tell me a little bit about uh kind of urban exploring because it's it seems to be in vogue right now super popular online how did you get kind of interested in uh that uh it was actually a road trip that my wife and i took up to colorado from north texas to colorado and we found an abandoned town out in the middle of nowhere and you saw this is really cool you know just the idea of seeing a, a structure that once held a lot of people it was a business or it was a school it was thriving and now it's doing nothing but rotting right that's kind of like i said it's gorgeous to see the earth reclaiming that and uh, to know what was once there is just a shell of of what it used to be and um it's even more gorgeous now than it was when people were were in it totally well you know i love that and it's kind of that is a, a little bit of the the sentiment that uh the the bad guy so to speak the villain the horror character has he's kind of an aesthete and he's talking about you know letting these places lie leave only footprints take only pictures don't touch it don't ruin it uh, mm -hmm. and i'm curious what's it like to write um of uh you know a, a villain who's got kind of that perspective what was it like writing this thing i it was surprisingly easy uh just because i completely understood where the character was coming from and there have been times when walking around in abandoned areas that you see these tags people have put up and you just think well that's an eyesore and it mm. hurts to see that and you get upset you get aggravated by it and you know it's like well i'm not the the murderous type but if i was this is what i would do <laughs> i should write this so totally surprisingly easy you know to to just sort of harness that inner emotion and then take it 10 steps farther right crank the dial up <laughs> exactly <laughs> well, i love that uh and you know and something else that really stuck out to me um it was the cinematography mm -hmm. really incredible i imagine some of that stuff was done with drones can you talk a little bit about that oh sure so we had our um uh, DP Peter actually he's done work uh, what was the the Robert Rodriguez show um, where he had a lot of young directors and mm. um, I, I don't recall the name of it but he was on that and we had hired him to come in and shoot it for us and a lot of that cinematography that was that was all him he uh, he came up with these ideas on the spot and we would just sort of bounce off of each other that's awesome and um, the drones you know that was before drones were really big on the market mm. you happen to have one and we thought oh let's use it and that uh, we were able to get a, a lot of those really cool shots like the top down of the truck just sort of right. following it around and uh now i wish we could go back and do more shots with it there's so many more ideas with it but the home that we shot in doesn't exist anymore so oh really yeah it, it was demolished but um as far as the way the film looks that aesthetic yeah that was a lot of that was peter and 
uh, a lot of what he's learned, actually all of it he's learned, he brought brought to us and it just, it made the film look great. As a matter of fact, the film was supposed to be all found footage uh, just through GoPros. And then talking with Peter, he said, well, let's do half and half. Why don't we do half of it as sort of a found footage film? And, you know, the other half is, you know, the audience sort of looking in at what's going on, as opposed to having a Blair Witch, you know, style right. film that's very shaky cam. Let's add some fluidity to it to make it to where it's not as, the audience won't be as nauseous. Right. Well, I love it because your, your perspective keeps changing. And, you know, one shot in particular, you're, you kind of, you reveal the house and all the people are standing there. But then all of a sudden the camera kind of flies forward and you realize that you you don't know really whose side you're rooted with, whose perspective you're supposed to orient yourself with. And it's oh, yeah. uh, it's to great effect. Uh, tell me a little bit about that location, which was so perfect. How did you find that place? Well, our main villain in it, Chance Gibbs, that was his grandmother's house. And she okay. had been in it for a really long time. And um, I believe it became vacant in the 90s and it just laid there for the longest time. So when I showed Chance the script, he said, we need to do it at my grandmother's place wow. out in the middle of nowhere, Texas. We're talking, you know, two and a half, three hours uh, west of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And so we drove out there and took a look at it. And it was, it was magnificent. It was gorgeous. It's the type of place that an urban explorer wants to find. You've got right. a barn that hasn't been touched. That's got rattlesnakes underneath the, uh, the concrete and just all of these hooks hanging everywhere. And in the house, there was one entire room that you look at it and you think, well, this is some old shag carpet, but as it turns out, it was a room that was shut off with a bunch of bees inside at one point. And all of those bees died. And that's oh what you're laying on the floor, completely covering it. So you're stepping on these bee carcasses wow. going through and all of this dust popping up. It was, it was gorgeous. It was amazing. Man. Well, you know, uh, it, one, one thing that is striking about this film is that in capturing the process of an urban explorer, you are sort of by virtue urban exploring in a, a house that is decaying. And you have to go with all the, uh, the, you know, the troubles that that brings. And so I'm curious, what was like shooting this like? What was, uh, you know, on set? What was that dynamic like? It was fun. Um, you know, everybody, it was a, a skeleton crew, not a lot of people okay. at all. And so that made it easier to manage because we weren't having to look out for anybody, you know, for extra people. It was just everybody knew their job. Let's do it. And we shot it over, oh uh, gosh, I want to say a day and a half total just in that location and then our final location. But um, it was, it was fun and it was hot and Everybody got sick, you know, <laughs> afterward because yeah. you're walking around in all of this literal decay. But um, it was a great experience. That's awesome. I love that. It's like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre story. Everyone got sick after that one, just being in the old house. <laughs> being in the old house for 12 hours straight, with, yeah. or 24 hours straight with rotting meat everywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have the meat, but we had the bees. Right. It's close enough. It's 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 dead. But uh, um, so uh, well, I'm curious, what did you learn from this process? Did you take any new insights on, uh, you know, the craft of filmmaking after this project? Oh, absolutely. It was one of the first films I I did. And I've done a couple since then. And you learn a lot, especially from my DP, because I didn't have a good sense of where I felt the camera should be compared to where he felt. He brought so many mm. new ideas and those ideas that he brought, I've just sort of tried to, to keep those and use them on future projects. Um, but uh, time management was a big thing, you know, learning on this. So you've got a, I think it was a 15 page script and we were trying to do 10 pages in one day in a location that none of us knew very well. <laughs> And also, you know, we're surrounded by literally nothing. So there's, you know, a heightened sense of danger sort of around right. you. And we weren't thinking about that going into it. And now anytime I go on a project, it's like, okay, what is our environment like? And, you know, as far as shooting, um, you know, having an actual shot list as opposed to going into it, just like, okay, yeah, cool. I think it might be cool if we did this, this, you know, working on, on the fly, it's, yeah, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's great advice, you know, working on pre-production, planning everything so that when you get there, you have more room if you want to uh, improvise, you know, you've got that structure to rely on. Um, and, and I really like what you're saying about, uh, you know, observing the DP. I think uh, we learned so much from 
observing or participating in these different roles, especially in independent filmmaking, where you got to wear all the hats uh, from time to time. Uh, <clears throat> but that's great actionable advice. Uh, well, now I'm curious, Trey, what are you working on next? You said that you made a couple short films since. Do you have anything else in the works right now? Uh, well, I finished a feature film that's actually oh. um, currently out. Uh, it's okay. called Goatman. It's it's fun. It's another horror flick, but it's a cheesy creature feature. Um, awesome. However, I just finished work as a producer and first AD on a film called Blood Dried Hands that is coming out later on this year. It's about to hit the festival circuit. It's sort of a, a cop procedural type drama that's kind of gory in action and a little bit of everything, but it's polished and it, it looks good, sounds good, and we're you know, team and I are really excited about it. Also awesome. working on a couple of short scripts. My son and I are working on a short film right now that we should have finished sometime soon. And very cool. Writing, writing, writing. Excellent. So you got great momentum going. Got a lot of projects in the works. And this uh, this cop procedural one, is this a short, you said? Uh, it's a two and a half hour long feature film. Oh, snap. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, and so, so this one, uh, Leave Only Footprints, when did you shoot this one? You said this is your first? Uh, Leave Only Footprints was my first, and we actually did this in 2017, 2018. Okay, so it's just hitting the hitting the festivals uh, right now. Maybe you, you let COVID kind of happen, and then <laughs> oh sure, sure, let COVID getting out there. COVID was, a, COVID was was terrible, but it was great as far as you know upping the uh, uh, right uh, creative. Well, that's so exciting because Leave Only Footprints is is such a great first film. It's so polished, and it and it has what I feel like are already kind of signature qualities. I mean, I feel like, like you, you mentioned uh, in some of your later projects, you're, you're jumping around in all these different kind of modes within a genre, which I feel like we have in Leave Only Footprints. Um, so I'm excited to see uh, more from you and I might just need to do some digging if you have any other uh, shorts online right now. Sure, sure. I'd be more than happy to send them your way. Please do. But uh, uh, Trey, is there anything else you'd like to say about uh, Leave Only Footprints? I... And it was a great time, great first film. Everybody was on point, you know, from the the music to the the cinematography to the acting. I just, I really overall great experience, and it was a great introduction into uh, filmmaking as far as for a first time director. I, I work on uh, done behind the scenes photography and videography for several other short films, but to actually be the the point, you know, point person behind. Uh, behind the making of the film, a great experience. So I can only hope that anybody that actually gets into filmmaking, that they have something that's similar to this experience. Totally. Well, I think people are really going to love this one on October 14th at the Texas Shore Film Festival. And uh, it's just it's just a great, great horror film people can really sink their teeth into. But Trey, right. thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you. I appreciate your time. And I'm looking forward to being there on the 14th. Absolutely. Take care.